Yeah, my name is Mohammed Yassin. Excuse me? My name is Mohammed Yassin. Okay, what is the emergency? I made a report that my chicken got stolen. Your chicken got stolen? Yep. This okay, is where are you, sir? Crosby Boulevard and I need the bridge. And what, what is the emergency, sir? Why did they sell my chicken? He come and catch my chicken underneath the bridge. I'm minding my chicken tongue underneath the bridge. Please open up the mouth and explain police response time. Thank you. Yeah, but, but, but this is like about uh, an hour ago, they said the same thing. A recorded message verifying that the incident you have reported has been received by the police 911. Mohammed Yassin lives under a bridge on the banks of the Queen's Ganges a slip of Jamaica Bay shoreline near Cross Bay Boulevard, nicknamed after the Indian River held sacred by Hindus. Some local Hindus, many from Guyana, drive down the six lane boulevard from the Belt Parkway through the suburbs and strip malls of Howard Beach, Queens. They park on the shoulder of the North Channel Bridge, now named the Joseph P. Adabo Bridge, and carry fruit and milk toward the water to offer puja to their gods. More rarely, worshipers will sacrifice chickens, goats, or pigs. Abandoning or loosing chickens is another form of worship for some. Since the winter, Muhammad has made it his mission to rescue the abandoned chickens. It looks like you have a chicken over there. Let's see how the bag is open up. It looks like there's a chicken in it. I just sit down here and watch them where they go and when they leave, what they come back with and what they do not come back with. If there's a chicken, they're going to leave it somewhere in the bush over there and it came back empty-handed, so they leave it over there. I just wonder how would you feel if you've been locked up in a wooden box, no food, no water, and you've been tortured and your toe chopped off and things like that, and someone pass by and rescue you, give you some water, food, So this way you could, you know, drink and eat and regain your health and strength. So this way you could be free. This summer, as the weather has become warmer, the bodies of animals used in religious sacrifice have become more prevalent even as more fishermen and park goers visit the beach. Or maybe it's just that somebody is there, nearly all day, every day, to see it. Mohammed, a boiler repairman whose bad luck had landed him under the bridge, had become the reluctant witness of an ancient ritual. Some worshippers of Kali Mai, or Mother Kali, who attend one of the scores of underground temples in nearby Brooklyn and Queens, will perform a ceremony on a chicken and then leave it or loose it in the park. Not all Kali temples believe in these practices. If I was loosing an uh, apple or loosing, uh, you know, we, 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 like we go to the Ganga Mai and, and we do puja. And we believe in, um, in, in, in putting a coconut. Coconut is considered as a fruit. Uh, banana, we carry flowers, and we put it in and we lose it in, into the river, we lose it. So they believe in losing the animal. Our way is pal pussy. Pal pussy means sweet. Milk, pal means milk, pussy means puja. So we're doing sweet parsar. And in them way, they call them ratam pussy, which means like blood. 
I think that is the very lowest form of worshiping God. And most people do that with high expectation. I am given this sacrifice so I will get rid of my problems or I will get some sort of material prosperity. And most people who involve in the animal sacrifice, it is for material gain. Religion and religious practice, whether it is sacrifice, yeah, whether it is jandi, whether it is the puja, whether it is the flag, um, it, it, it's deeply rooted as it is in India with people's everyday livelihood. It's a belief system um, that, they're, that they're transmitting. So these belief systems are not new. They're thousands and thousands of years old. I actually have never witnessed an animal sacrifice being done here at the bay in our time during the cleanups. That being said, it's very obvious that it does occur here because we've seen through our cleanups many, many different animals that are left here. And, and the question of whether they're done through sacrifice or not, you know, it's up in the air because like I said, we haven't seen anything, but it does happen. We have actually developed a relationship with one Kali church, Kali temple thus far. It's the Adi Shakti Maha Kali temple in Queens Village, New York. And their priest actually also advocates for practices that are kind to the earth, including staying away from animal sacrifice. We're in an urban park, and we have this thing here where we have so many different cultures and communities, and this is one area in which is a very large Hindu community that uses this area for offerings. So I'm not sure if there is any other parks that really have this kind of issue that we deal with here. There are people here by the water consistently leaving things. I get the idea that they're praying. I see a lot of chickens here, a lot of unattended chickens. I actually did write a letter to our uh, local government officials here to take some action because it's a, it's a beautiful place here that should, be, uh, that should be used by all people. But a lot of people are afraid because they see, uh, they see these things that they're not used to. The only thing I'm scared of is my own shadow. I don't scared of anything else or anybody. You see, like in the nighttime, the moonlight, like the reflection, like when you're walking, sometimes you see two shadows, sometimes you see three shadows. Sometimes while walking, you think somebody in the back of you, following you. When you turn around, there's no one there except your shadow. Keep finding them in the bush and stuff like that, in boxes. And the worst thing about it, every time I pass by and there's a box, I happens to find a chicken in it. Put you in my shoe, what would you do? I always tell him, look, man, it's Father's Day. Let's take one of those chickens and cook it and eat it, man. We can eat. He like, no, you ain't touching one of those chickens. I know Muhammad for over what, uh, 50, over 15 years. Good guy. I'm surprised that, you know, it's sad to see him there. I don't even like talking about it because it makes me want to get my tears out. But. I think they're there for a reason because the person probably taking care of them, he'll get a lot of blessings because he's saving them from danger. And that's what every man should do.
something is there suffer and save them because you don't know what form of God maybe is coming there. Because we believe that God resides in everything, in everywhere, in every living thing. Everything that moves and everything that does not move, everything is in the middle, and above, and space, everywhere. We believe that God resides in everything. So those persons who are taking care of those chickens, they're, they're a blessed soul. They're blessed. God bless them. There you go. In July, Mohammed was offered a temporary room in East New York, Brooklyn. But every two days, he returns to tend to the chickens. You don't believe it, right? Each time, the flock grows smaller. Is that right? He's no longer there to protect them. He's even witnessed park goers loading crates of his chickens into their cars. He calls 911, but authorities have never responded. Still, Mohammed keeps returning, taking the bus or riding a bike down the conduit to Cross Bay Boulevard because he misses the long view of Jamaica Bay toward the Rockaways. The campfires at night, the roosters at dawn, and because he never really considered himself homeless, he considered himself free. She drank coffee, Sila. She drank tea, Sila. And again, the light, Sila. Way down yonder, Sila. Hind the log, Sila. And the rooster crowed, Sila. And again, the light, Sila. Sila, woman, Sila. She drank coffee, Sila. She drank tea, Sila. And again, the light, Sila. Sila, woman, Sila. She drank coffee, Sila. She drank tea, Sila. And again, the light, Sila.